In this video, we're going to look at sketching the graphs of reciprocal functions. We're going to start off with the graph of y is equal to 1 over x. You might see this written as y is equal to x to the power of negative 1. This is just using the rules of indices. We say for this particular graph, x cannot be equal to 0. We can't evaluate the function y is equal to 1 over x or f of x is equal to 1 over x when x is naught. Division by 0 is undefined, therefore we can't now have x is equal to 0. So let's look at this graph. We're going to look at the shape and the key features of the graph. What I'm going to have to the right of the y-axis is the curve coming down and getting very close to the x-axis but never touching it. I'm going to have exactly the same shape now to the left of the y-axis and again the curve will never touch either of these axes. If we now consider x, the x-axis, if we look now as x gets very large, either positive or negative, we can say as x tends to either positive or negative infinity, y will tend to 0. Just think about this. If we're looking at this 1 over x, so for example, if I had a cake and it was just me, then I'd have the whole cake, 1 divided by 1. If I invited two people, I'm going to have now half. Four people, a quarter. Ten people, a tenth. One hundred people, I'm going to have now one one hundredth. So the more people I invite to eat the cake, the less of the cake I'm going to get. I'm never going to have nothing though. We can keep cutting that cake and there will still be some left. As a result, what we say now is the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote and we can write now that this line is y is equal to zero and this is what we call an asymptote so asymptote and we've got two of these we've got a horizontal and a vertical one and you might say well you could keep cutting the cake and it will disappear to the naked eye it would but we will always have some left so y can tend to zero but it can't be equal to zero in the same way, we have now the line x is equal to 0. And if I just go ahead and put that on, let's put that just here. This is also an asymptote. These are hidden by the coordinate axis, but we must put them on. So x is equal to 0 is also an asymptote. So this is the y-axis, x is naught. This is the x-axis, y is equal to naught. And what we can say on this now is that as x, so we can write this down, as x tends to 0, y will tend to positive or negative infinity. So depending if we come from now the right, so if we approach from the right, so this is where the values are going to be positive, y would tend to positive infinity. And you might see that written now uh, if you wanted as x tends to 0 from the right, we can say y tends to positive infinity. In the same way, we could say as x tends to 0 from the left, y tends to negative infinity. This isn't really required as such, but I'm sort of adding it for completeness. All we've got to realize is that we have these, uh, these asymptotes. So if we just think about this, and we're just sketching this, we don't need to plot it and put points on. What we'd have now is 1, 1. This point is going to be 2, 1 half. Let's say this point right here is going to be 4, 1 quarter. If I picked a point just here, let's put now that this is going to be at 0 0.1 or 1 tenth. This is going to give me 10. So we can see as we get closer and closer to 0, that's going to start getting huge. And in the same way with negative values, it will get very large and very negative. So if we just look now, what we've got is y is equal to 1 over x. So if we said now x is equal to 1, then y is going to be equal to 1, 1 divided by 1. Now if x was equal to 1 tenth, y is going to be equal to 1 divided by 1 tenth, which is going to be 10. What you're going to see here, as that value of x gets smaller, so let's put in x is going to be equal to 1 one hundredth, which is getting very, very close to the coordinate axis, y is going to be equal to 1 over 1 one hundredth, which of course is going to be 100. So hopefully that shows um, 
why we can't ever have x is equal to zero. Um, probably rightly or wrongly, I'll show you another way of thinking about this. If this is a one meter cubed box now, and I stood there with cubes with a volume. So this is just a one by one by one. So the volume is one. If I stood there throwing cubes in this and the volume of the cube was zero, how many can I throw in there before it's full? The answer is an undefined amount. And that's why division, well, it's not why division by zero uh, is undefined, but it just shows you that how many noughts go into one? Infinitely many, if you wish, or an undefined amount. So that's what we get. Um, so there's your basics. Uh, we have now this curve. It tends to zero in these directions, and it's uh, a symmetric just here. If you want, you could say it's got a rotational uh, rotational symmetry um, order of two about the origin. Um, again, I don't think that's massively important. Um, but what we'll do, we'll look at some of these and just graph them and look at the key features. So we are sketch following curve stating the equations of any asymptote. So y is equal to 1 over x, where x can't be 0. So this is the one we've just done. So let's just go ahead now and just uh, think about now the key features. So to recap what we looked at now, all you'd be expected to do in an exam is have the rough shape. Remember, this is quite tough to, to get right, and especially on the tablet. Uh, that's going to look something like that. That's going to look something like that. We would state now y is equal to 1 over x. x can't be equal to 0. And we could say now asymptotes, so asymptotes are going to be x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. Some teachers, books, exams may let you uh, write that it's the x-axis and the y-axis. I'm asked for the equation. That is better for me. x is not and y is not. And I actually draw them on. And I'd even just show a point to show the examiner that I know what I'm doing. Certainly don't need to. I'm going to put that point there, 1, comma 1. Okay, next one. Now, just looking ahead at these, some of them have got graph transformations in. It really, it really doesn't matter. We're going to look at graph transformations in a later video, but we can apply exactly the same. All this one here is saying now y is equal to 3 over x. It's saying 3 lots of 1 over x. This one is defined for negative values of x only. Um, we couldn't include 0 quite clearly. 3 divided by 0 is undefined. So all that's happening here is a scale factor. So SF of 3 uh, in the y direction stretch. Um, again, it's hard to show this on a graph unless you're drawing two of the graphs on the same uh, set of coordinate axis. So let's just go ahead. We only want this now for values um, less than 0. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and put this on here. So we'll have that, and it'll look something like that. Again, I'm going to just put these on. I'm going to show the example. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to put a horizontal and vertical asymptote on. We've got x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, and we'll state those. So we've got now x is equal to 0, or the y-axis, and then y is equal to 0, or the x-axis. So this is what I've got. I've got three lots of 1 over x. So if I put now this point in here, what we're going to have now is negative 1. So I'm subbing in negative 1. If I put in here negative 1, y is equal to 3 over negative 1. That's going to give me this point right here of negative 3. So just show me examiner exactly what I'm doing and appreciating that this is defined for values of x less than 0. Okay, this one right here. y is equal to negative 2 over x. x can't be 0. This has just got two transformations. If you start off y is equal to 1 over x, we could write y is equal, doesn't matter which way around you do it, 2 over x. This is a scale factor stretch of 2 in y, so that's a stretch. Then, if we just now multiply it by negative 1, negative 2 over x, well this is going to be a reflection, so reflect in x axis. So that's all we're doing. Often with these, um, we, it's, it's easier just to draw the original graph and then uh, go from there over the top with a different colour. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead. Now, if I drew the graph of 2 over x, what we'll have is something like so. So let's do that. That now is going to be 2 over x. So it looks something like that. That's not brilliant, but again, not massively concerned. So that would be 2 over x. All I'm going to do is simply now reflect this in the x-axis, and it'll look something like that. Uh, that looks a bit better, actually. That was quite good. 
um, and then it'll come round and it'll look something like that. Uh, for some reason that looks actually all right. So that is y is equal to negative 2 over x. I'm going to put the asymptotes on. Again, we don't want this white. I wouldn't leave the white on there. Um, that would be off. That now is the line y is equal to 0. That is the line x is equal to 0. And I'll clearly uh, tell the examiner, or whoever I'm doing this for, that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 are my asymptotes. If you want to put a point on here to show you know what you're doing, this point is going to be 1 and we're going to have negative 2. Don't need to do that. Um, it's there for you if you wish. So all of these are basic transformations. We could apply translations. If we had, for example, y is equal to 1 over x minus 1, all this is is the f of x minus 1, which we know is a translation of one unit in the positive x direction. y is equal to 1 over x plus 2 plus 3. Well, this is simply now f of x plus 2 plus 3. So all we would do is move it to 2 now and 3. Let's just look at this one, though, because this does have implications now for the equations of the asymptotes as we are moving this. So all we're doing now is moving this left by 2. Now, often it's easier to actually redraw the asymptotes first. So if I move this left by 2, we're not going to have the line x is equal to 0. What we're going to have is the line x is equal to negative 2. So that becomes a vertical asymptote. And if we consider we've now lifted this graph, we've translated it by three units. So that is going to move up like so. So that isn't the line anymore where y is equal to zero. It's the line y is equal to three. And then all we would do is literally just draw it. And let me draw it with a different color. Uh, we would draw it in here. OK, so that would look something like that. And then this would look something like that. So that, do something like that. And that's not bad, apart from the, the wonky bit down the bottom. With this particular um, uh, equation, we can see, or particular graph, we can see that it does cross the y-axis at this point. And we could, if we wanted, solve the equation for the roots. So, for example, if we said f of x is equal to 1 over x plus 2 plus 3... Um, then what we could see from here now, if we wanted to solve that, all we would do is set it to 0. So 0 is equal to 1 over x plus 2 plus 3. So we could write negative 3 is equal to 1 over x plus 2. x plus 2 is going to be equal now to negative 1 over 3. Subtracting the 2 from both sides, x is going, what's that going to give me, negative 7 thirds? Uh, negative 7 thirds. So that is just solving the equation by setting it to naught. So that's negative 7 thirds naught. Um, if you wanted this one, well, that's where x is naught, so it's a half plus 3, so 3 and a half. Um, and it's, it's, relatively, it's relatively okay. Um, anyway, that was showing a translation, uh, which you'll come on to later, but I think it's important anyway, and I'm kind of hoping that you understand that one. Right, this one right here, if we just look at this, we've got y is equal to 1 over x. We're going to multiply this by 2 thirds, so y is equal to 2 over 3 1 lot of x. So that's just a scale factor stretch in the, the y direction of 2 thirds. And then we're going to reflect it now in the x-axis, so negative 2 thirds 1 over x, which you could write now as y is equal to, of course, negative 2 over 3x. So this is bigger than zero. So if we just consider now, we we all we do is quickly, again, the asymptotes are what they were. X is not, Y is not. Um, and the original would look something, so two thirds X would come around here. So all I'm gonna do is reflect that now in the X axis. And we're interested in this for great uh, values greater than zero. So Y is equal to negative two thirds X. I'm going to show the asymptotes for dotted lines and I'm going to tell the examiner I know exactly where they are. So that's what we end up with. X is naught, Y is naught. That's not changed, uh, unlike the translations. So we've got now Y is equal to naught, X is equal to naught, and I'm just going to show a point on here. So if I chose a point, let's say that's one, that's going to be negative two thirds. Right, so that's that. Okay, y is equal to 1 over x squared. This is um, actually quite interesting um, because what we're doing is taking the value and squaring it. 
Now, with this, um, it's not simply a case of it being a reflection. Um, so, for example, now, if we think about what we'd have, uh, let's go ahead. And, what I'm going to do is y is equal to, um, we, we'll have some, let's make this y is equal to 1 over x. So, 1 over x, again, looks something like that. Um, okay, it's not just a case of this part coming up here. There are differences in the graph. And what we'll see is that it looks something like so. We will have now this scenario, and they're going to meet at this point, and that is going to do something like that. So that's going to be the point 1, 1. And then what we're going to have is something that looks like that. So uh, y is equal to 1 over x squared uh, versus y is equal to 1 over x. Let's just put that on. y is equal to 1 over x. Same asymptotes. Uh, again, we've got these asymptotes uh, now. Let's go ahead and put those on. So we've got x is 0, y is 0. So there's y is 0. There's x is equal to 0. Um, in fact, let's go, let's go ahead and graph and see what this uh, looks like. So let's do y is equal to 1 over, and then we'll have x squared. There we go, that's that one. And then we will do, let's come out of there, and then we'll have y is equal to 1 over x. Uh, 1 over x, let's put that, there we go. Right, so hope, let's just make that one slightly brighter. So there's a point 1, 1, and then we can see, as uh, expected, consider this point right here, if we put 2 in, y is equal to 1 over x will give us a half. This will give us a quarter. 2 squared is a quarter. And we can see it's symmetric now about uh, about the uh, y-axis just here. Uh, so if we put negative 2 in, negative 2 squared is 4. 1 over 4 is going to give us a quarter. So we can see now that this is going to get closer and closer, quicker and quicker. Because, again, this point, instead of being 4, is now 4 squared, which is 16. So there we go. That's y is equal to 1 over x squared. Perfectly fine. It just takes a bit of thought process to think what we're going to have. So there we go. A basic introduction to reciprocal functions. I'm not going to go into rational functions uh, and look at different examples of those. That, that comes in a different different unit. Um, well, let's say rational functions, examples of rational functions. Um, but hopefully for now you can draw the graph of y equals 1 over x, understand why we've got asymptotes, understand uh, that the, uh, it can never be 0, it can tend to 0 um, as x gets very large in either direction. Um, and, and that's basically it. So in future videos we'll look at some more graph transformations, so if you're not cool with what I've looked at, that should help.